Let's take a tour of the space. If we move out of the Earth's atmosphere, we enter into space. Now, just like our mother Earth, seven other planets are found in space. Apart from planets, other celestial bodies like comets, meteorites, asteroids, etc. are found in space. All these celestial bodies revolve around a single object and that is Sun. In fact, Sun is the biggest star in our solar system and it is situated at the center of our solar system. Now, Sun is a giant ball of hydrogen and helium. Sun produces enormous amount of energy and a portion of which provides Earth with heat and light energy. Thus, the solar energy coming from the Sun is very important for sustenance of life on Earth. So, in the previous video, we saw that Earth receives heat and light energy from Sun. But Sun is far away from us. Then how is heat transferred from Sun to Earth? Well, there are three methods in which heat can be transferred. Let us understand the methods with the help of an example. Suppose you are sitting on the last bench in a classroom and you want to transfer a paper to the student sitting on the first bench. How will you do that? You will simply pass the paper to the student sitting in front of you and you will ask him or her to pass the paper to the student sitting in front of him. So this is how the paper reaches to the student sitting on the first bench. So in the previous video, we saw that a paper was transferred among the students through direct contact. Heat also transfers among the molecules in a similar process. In this video, we can see that the bottom of the vessel is receiving direct heat from the stove. And in this process, heat is transferred not by the actual movement of molecules, but by the vibration of molecules. So, as the molecules vibrate, heat is transferred from one molecule to the other. And this process of heat transfer is called conduction. So, conduction is a process in which heat is transferred among the particles through direct contact. And this usually takes place in solids. Now, there is a second way in which you can transfer the paper to the student sitting on the first bench. You can actually get up from your place and give the paper to the student sitting on the first bench. Similarly, heat is also sometimes transferred by the actual movement of the particles. In this video, we can see that the hot water molecules are rising up while the cold water molecules are sinking and they are again heated up and rises. So, this process continues. So, here we can see that heat is transferred by the actual movement of the particles and this process is called convection. Now, there is yet another method in which you can transfer the paper. Suppose you do not want to involve any third person and also you do not want to change your position. Then how will you transfer the paper? You can simply throw the paper to the student sitting on the first bench. Now, heat is also transferred in a similar process where it does not involve any action of the molecules. In this video, we can see that the cook standing in front of the gas stove is feeling the warmth. Here, heat is transferred by the process of radiation. So, heat radiation is the process which involves heat transfer by emission of waves. Here, the waves carry the heat energy away from the emitting body. So now, let us discuss how heat transfers takes place in nature. We know sun is far away from us and we receive sun's heat by the process of radiation. Now, as the earth's surface receives the solar radiation, it gets heated up. Now, as the earth's surface gets heated up, it also heats the air 
lying above it so the air lying just above the ground gets heated up by the process of conduction as the air is in close contact with the ground and is heated up by the process of conduction now as the air lying above the earth surface gets heated up the hot air rises because hot air is lighter now the cold air from above sinks and this process continues in the form of a cycle so the vertical movement of air that occurs in nature takes place by the process of convection so these are the different ways in which heat is transferred in nature now before we proceed with our lesson let us try to answer this question identify the process in which sun's heat is received by the earth is it via conduction convection radiation or evaporation well the correct answer is radiation we just learned that radiation is the process by which heat is transferred from sun to the earth so i just mentioned that sun's heat is received by the earth through the process of radiation now this phenomena or this process is known as insulation so the word insulation refers to incoming solar radiation where in stands for incoming so comes from solar and radiation comes from radiation so the incoming solar radiation which is received by the earth's surface is called insolation now in this picture we can see that solar energy comes from the sun and it's received by the earth's surface so this picture depicts the case of insulation so we learned that the earth receives the solar radiation now the earth's surface does not keep the solar radiation to itself rather it radiates back some of the solar radiation so the amount or the part of solar radiation that is radiated back by the earth's surface is called terrestrial radiation now here the word terrestrial is related to earth's surface so the portion of the sun's heat that is radiated back by the earth's surface is called terrestrial radiation now in this picture we can see that sun's heat comes to the earth's surface and a portion of it is radiated back to space and this is called terrestrial radiation so now let us discuss the differences between insulation and terrestrial radiation insulation is the amount of solar radiation received by the earth's surface on the other hand terrestrial radiation is the part of the sun's heat that is radiated back by the earth's surface now what is the source of insulation or where does this heat comes from sun is the source of insulation on the other hand the sun's heat is radiated back by soil water and vegetation present at the earth's surface so the sources of terrestrial radiation are mostly external and these sources are present within the earth's surface and they are soil water and the vegetation present on the earth's surface now the solar energy comes to the earth in the form of short waves in other words the solar radiation usually have shorter wavelengths now what is meant by wavelength 
Now, wavelength refers to the distance between two consecutive highest point of a wave. So, this is the wavelength. Now, the sun's rays usually have shorter wavelengths. On the other hand, terrestrial radiation travels in longer waves. That is, they have longer wavelengths. So, the distance between the two consecutive highest point or crest will be larger in case of terrestrial radiation. So, these are the important point of differences between insulation and terrestrial radiation. The main point of difference between insulation and terrestrial radiation is that insulation is the amount of solar energy received by the earth's surface and terrestrial radiation is the part of solar energy that is radiated back by the earth's surface. So, now let us discuss what happens to the total amount of solar energy that is received by the earth. Let us assume that 100 percent of the solar energy comes to the earth. So, 100 percent is the incoming solar radiation. So, this solar radiation coming from the sun is 100 percent. Now, we know that a part of the solar radiation is received by the earth's surface and this amount is 51 percent. So, 51 percent is the sun's heat that reaches the earth's surface. So, in other words, the amount of insulation is 51 percent. So, we see that out of 100 percent, only 51 percent reaches the earth's surface. So, what happens to the rest? Well, 14 percent is absorbed by the atmosphere. We know different greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, dust particles etc. are present in the earth's atmosphere and these greenhouse gases trap some of the sun's heat and keeps the earth warm at night. So, 14 percent amount of solar radiation is absorbed by the earth's atmosphere. So, this amount of sun's heat that is absorbed by the earth's atmosphere is 14 percent. Now, 35 percent of the sun's heat does not actually enter the earth. It is rather reflected back into space. So, before reaching the earth's atmosphere, 35 percent of the solar radiation is reflected back to space. So, we see that 14 percent is absorbed by the atmosphere and 35 percent is reflected back to space and only 51 percent is received by the earth's surface. So, the insulation is 51 percent. So, I just mentioned that 51 percent of the solar radiation is received by the earth's surface. Now, just imagine that if earth receives 51 percent of the solar radiation every day, then by this time the earth would have become quite hotter. But nothing like that has happened, isn't it? Yes, this is because the earth does not keep the sun's heat to itself, but it radiates back the sun's heat. Around 34 percent is radiated back by the earth's surface to the atmosphere. So, the 51 percent of the sun's heat that is received by the earth, out of that 34 percent is radiated back to the earth's atmosphere and 17 percent is radiated back to space. So, out of 51 percent, 17 percent of the sun's heat is radiated back to space. 
so here we see that 34% is radiated back to the atmosphere and 17% is radiated back to space so if we add this 34% and 17% then it comes to 51% so 51% is the outgoing terrestrial radiation or the amount of solar energy that is radiated back by the earth's surface and also note one thing the amount of insulation that is 51% equals to the amount of terrestrial radiation that is also 51% so here we see a balance is maintained between the incoming solar radiation and the outgoing terrestrial radiation we know the incoming solar radiation is partly absorbed by the earth's atmosphere and partly reflected back to space only a portion of it is received by the earth's surface which is known as insulation again the sun's heat is radiated back to atmosphere and space and this is known as outgoing terrestrial radiation now this equilibrium or balance between the insulation and outgoing terrestrial radiation is known as heat balance or heat budget so therefore we see that the earth maintains a delicate balance between heat received and heat given out now if this balance is disturbed then our mother earth will become progressively warmer or cooler which will not be favorable for us so in today's video we understood the meaning of insulation then we understood the meaning of terrestrial radiation we also differentiated between insulation and terrestrial radiation finally we learned about heat budget in our next video we will discuss the factors that affect the rate of insulation don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now